welcome to another exciting time with Pastor Shim on Straight Talk with Pastor Shim. I'm happy to have you here and I know that, you know, it's a time where we interact, you know, we teach each other and I know that you will be blessed. Today, I'm going to be talking about something, you know, that I, I happen to, you know, have a passion for. Because as a parent, I'm a parent of two lovely kids and, you know, and I'm also very proud of them. I'm proud of my children. I know we all are proud of our kids, but I am particularly proud of my kids because they are so, such wonderful kids that I've taken my time to raise up in the way they should go. So today we'll be talking about our parental responsibilities. And I want to talk about, I want to read a scripture from the Bible which is um, taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, and verse 6. It says, Train up your child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Training up your child. I know growing up, I've always felt like, you know, the, Bible, the scripture was actually about training up your child, you know, in the Bible alone, you know, according to the scriptures alone. But over time, I found out that we live in this world, and so there are so many things that, our children, you know, our children will, will come to have, you know, come in contact with. And so as parents, we have to be able to navigate and train these children in every aspect, you know, of life that they come in contact with. So um, I remember back in, you know, growing up, when I was growing up, I, know, I have spoken to other people as well. So growing up in Africa, the way we are trained is actually very different from the way you know children are being trained now and in this world that we're in in this part of the world that we're in apart from the fact that you know growing up in africa the kind of training we have is different even children who are growing up in africa now they still don't have the same kind of parental training that we had i remember back then when, when once you're being you know once you're being scolded by your parents you are not allowed to look them in the eye because it's a, it's a sign of disrespect, you know, disrespect to actually look at them in the eye. But right here, once you're scolding a child, right now, once you're scolding a child, especially in this Western world, once you're scolding a child and you don't look, and the child doesn't look you straight in the eye, in the eye it's a sign of disrespect. So when, once a child is being scolded over here, they say, oh, look me in the eye, look me in the eye. You know, they keep saying, look me in the eye. That's a sign of, of respect. And at first, I used to be like, you, you shouldn't be ma making eye contact with me because I'm talking to you. Your head should be kind of down, you know. That's how we're being trained. But over here, it's quite different. So training up over, over here and now, in this time, are two different worlds. And that's why, as parents, we have to understand the times we're in and we also have to be able to train our child or our children in the way they should go. I, I, I know that the last time I got whooped was actually when I was like around 18 years old. But over here, whooping a one-year-old child, right now, whooping a one-year-old child is more like a crime. If you whoop your child, it is more like a crime. So things are different. So you have to be able to navigate and understand how to train your children. You have to be able to understand how to raise your children in such a way that they will become, you know, responsible citizens. Because we have to understand that the reason why we do the things is because we want to raise children who will make us proud in the future. Children who themselves will become proud parents and we will also be able to instill the same kind of discipline that we have been able to in, in, in instill in them into their own children. So it's like we are actually building a generation. That's what you know, being, you know, being a parent is all about. You're actually building a, you know, a generation. So you must understand that even though the times are different, even though, though the times are, have changed, it is your responsibility. It is your duty to train up your child. It is your duty to, to discipline them. It is your duty to lead them in the right path. So I'm going to be talking about how we can achieve these various things without, you know, without being, without being 
a bully because of course as parents we can become bully to our children if you are not careful so without being a bully and also being able to instill those discipline in those children i remember i saw a show um a show i stumbled across a show yesterday and i saw two individuals a mother and a child and they were actually they were at, at like on each other's face yelling at each other and at some point, I wondered, who is the mother and who is the child? I, I want to believe that along the line, this mother did something wrong. And that's why, you know, her child has become so confrontational with her that she could be, you know, be yelling and be outrightly disrespectful to her. So we have to learn, you know, the, the different, you know, steps, the different ways that we can train up these children, that they become you know, important, important personalities in this, you know, in this world. So I, I also want to read a, you know, um, a scripture in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. It says, fathers, do not irritate and provoke your children to anger. Do not ex exasperate them to resentment, but, but rear them tenderly in the training and discipline and the counsel and admonition of the Lord. Praise the Lord. You see, we can we can actually, you know, we, we, we can actually, you know, provoke our children to hunger if we're not careful. So that's why as parents, we must be able to draw the line. Okay, where where do I draw the line in in, 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 in training or raising my child or my child? So those are the things we'll be talking about. And one of the things that I want to say is that you must discipline your child. As a parent, you as a parent. The child is the child. If we leave our children, they'll definitely want to be, you know, every child will always want to have their way. But as a parent, you have to be able to draw the line. You have to be able to say no when you have to say no. And you have to be able to say yes and apologize to your child when you have to apologize to your child. You have to be able to teach your child, okay, why don't I do this, this thing? Why mustn't I do this thing? I've, I, myself, as a parent, I've come to develop a form whereby I discipline my children. It could be their favorite toy. Like I know my kids, they, they both have phones. So sometimes when I feel like, oh, they are going above, you know, they are going above the line, we say, okay, fine. You're not going to have your phone for a week. You're not going to have your phone for, you know, for some certain days. That way we, we are able to tell them that, look, you have to get it right. Because if you don't get it right, things that are dear to you will be taken away from you. Sometimes, of course, we have to scold them, you know, by telling them, no, don't do this. You know, you can raise your voice at your children, you know, just to make a point, you know, across to them. Like my son. My son is someone who is very sweet. And once you raise your voice, he knows that, oh, I've gotten to a level whereby mommy or daddy are upset with me. So you have to get to a point whereby you instill that discipline. You don't have to, you know, whoop your child. You can always put them on timeout, especially if your children are younger. You can put them on timeout. You say, okay, sit down over there and don't get, don't get up. And then, once you discipline a child, once you're trying to make um, a point across to a child, also remember to tell them what they did that is wrong. Don't just say, oh, um, you're disciplining a child because you don't want that child to do. Explain to them why they shouldn't do that thing. Explain to them the consequences of doing that thing. So you have to be able to draw the line. Another thing is that you have to have a good relationship with your children. Don't be too harsh on them that they cannot talk to you. Don't be too harsh on them that they cannot, you know, they cannot express themselves in a respectful manner. Like my sometimes my kids, my kids, you know, they have to, you know, they did something that is wrong, and I'm like, okay, I'm scolding them, and I say, okay, so explain to me why did you do this. And then they'll tell me, okay, mommy, this is the reason why I did this. This is why, da, 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 da. and then I listen to them. You must be able to listen to them. Listen to your children. Don't just say, oh, no, no. Understand why they did some things and explain to them why they shouldn't do the things. And also tell them the consequences of doing some certain things. So you must have a good relationship with your your, your children, even while you are disciplining them, they must have a, you must have a relationship where you are able to communicate with them, you know, so that, you know, they will be able to, to understand and learn from their mistake. I remember one time I had a client, you know, a little girl, she was in my seat, she was, you know, I had some other people that, you know, in the, sh in the shop that day, and I was making her hair, and I remember that I, I realized that she was, 
you know, making some comments. Even when we adults were making, were having a conversation, she was always chipping, you know, as if, you know, she was always chipping some rude comments and rude answer. And her mother was sitting right there. And there was never a time her mother said, oh, no, you don't talk like that. Or, no, don't say that. Or, no, don't do that. You know, she just, you know, she just smiled. Sometimes the child will make a remark and she just smiles as if, oh, okay, you know. And my blood was boiling because I wanted to say, no, you don't talk like that. You don't, you know, you don't respond like that. But I didn't have the opportunity to say that because our mom, who was supposed to have been able to do that, didn't do that. And now, this girl, I think she should be like in maybe like, like 9 or 10. This girl will grow up and by the time she's grown, her mom will now find it very hard, you know, to, to have a conversation with her because by then, she didn't, she, she, she had already formed a, you know, she had already formed an opinion, you know, she has already found an opinion already, and she always, you know, always want to have her way. So as, you know, as parents, especially when these children are young, you should be able to lead them. You should be able to direct them. You should be able to, you know, teach them. That's what, you know, being a parent is, you know. And also, you have to be able to set some boundaries. I know I've mentioned that before. Set some boundaries. As a parent, sense or sense. like me, my kids, I let my kids have access to their phone. Once they get back from school, they have access to their phone till like, you know, 7 p.m. From 7 p.m., they know that they have to bring their phones to the room. Sometimes my kids act like they don't remember. You know, sometimes they'll be like, you know, they're still, you know, they're still on their phone doing whatever. And then I have to be like, you forget that it's 7 o'clock. Don't you know you should bring your phone to my room? The phone always is in my room because, you know, Kids can be sneaky sometimes and they wake up in the middle of the night like my son. He doesn't like to sleep, so he may wake up in the middle of the night and go back to his phone. That's why as a parent, you have to set boundaries. That's, that's how you discipline your children. Set boundaries. If you don't want them... I am not a parent that believes that a child should have a TV in their room because I know that they can wake up in the middle of the night and you know, they can you know, watch TV when they should be sleeping. And then the next day they have to go to school and they're all grumpy and because they didn't have a good night's sleep. That's why as, as parents, you have the responsibility to set that boundary. You have that responsibility to say, draw the line. You've had enough of this. And that's it. My kids, like there's some certain things I don't like my kids, like soda. Of course my kids drink soda, but there are some boundaries that I set that even up till now, my kids just don't go into the pantry to get soda because I set a boundary that no, you can't have it. So, you know, that way they are being trained. Their minds and their, you know, their minds and their bodies are being trained. And like, okay, no, I don't do this, I don't do that. That's how you set boundaries, you know, you know, as a parent. You also have to also, even while you are disciplining your children, also help them to create confidence in themselves. Because when kids are confident of, of themselves, they'll be able to, you know, they'll be able to boldly, you know, defend themselves if they have to. But even if they have to defend themselves with you as a parent, they will do it in a respectful way. So that when they are grown, you know, they won't just outrightly be like, oh, mom, no, 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 don't talk to me, you can't talk to me, no. Because already you have already set the boundary. People say, okay, mommy, I understand what you want me to do, blah, blah, blah. But also, I want to do it this way. And we're able to sit down. So when you create that boldness in your children, they don't, they don't become rebellious. Because, you know, once kids are timid, that's when they become rebellious. That's, why, that's when they become bullies. So as parents, we, don't, we shouldn't bully our children. Because whatever you do to your children is an outright reflection of what they will do to other children. So as parents, we should be mindful of the way that, you know, we, we interact with our children. Don't let them become too afraid of you. That, you know, they, they carry out, they, 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 they can't stand or they can't, you know, they can't express themselves when they're with, you know, with their peers. So always understand. Like, I know my daughter, I trained her so much. You know, I gave her so much confidence. Like, <laughs> if you see myself and my daughter talking, you will think, oh, yeah, we get along very, I get along very well with my children, but when I want to become a mommy, I am a mommy. Once, you know, I, no, you can't do this, no, this is it, this is, I make, I always, always, always define my mommy mode, but if you see myself and my children playing, you will even think we are age mates, because of the way, you know, I've been able to set the boundaries. I let, I let them be free with me, but there are boundaries. So as parents, we must, there must be a boundary. So, as a parent, we must, we must, we, we, we should always and 
constantly understand that even when we rebuke our children, we are rebuking them for, you know, for, a, for a reason. And we must let them understand this reason. Don't just rebuke your kids because you feel like, oh, I want to do this. I, you know, rebuke them to, you know, to set them aright. And also appreciate them when you have to. Also appreciate them when you have to. I remember recently something happened in my daughter's school and she got um, you know, an appreciation for what she did. And when I got a call from the principal, the principal was like, oh, I, wanna, I, wanna, I just want to thank you for your daughter. She's such a good girl, blah, blah, blah. And then the first thing when I got home, I was like, oh, Anita, oh, come on, you go, girl, you rock. You know, I appreciated her. I made her you know, understand that what she did was, you know, was deser deserves to be, you know, to be appraised, deserves to be praised. So as parents, you should always appreciate your children that way you won't you won't breed a rebellious child you won't build breed it because by the time you wrap it, they understand that oh mommy or daddy is proud of me and then stop comparing kids two kids are different they are both different individuals like my son is different from my daughter completely different they're two different individuals and so when i deal with them I don't deal with them as in, oh, hey, Anita always does this. Why don't you do this? I always deal with him as he is. I always deal with her as she is. So when you have more than one children, always learn to appreciate those children and deal with them. Don't compare kids. Don't ever compare your children. So always learn to, you know, to deal with these children individually. Appreciate them for who they are. You know, that way, each child will understand that they are unique and they are special. And then you won't have to have, you know, a child who is rebellious because a child will always feel like, oh, mommy loves this one better than me. So that way, you know, you are able to, you know, train them up together and let them know that they are different in their unique ways. One of the last scriptures I, wanted to, I want to read is from, is taken from the second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 15. And it says, and that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise, unto salvation through faith which is in christ jesus <laughs> it is very important to train your children in the word you, it is important for your children to to know the scriptures it is important i know that several times my son will say oh mommy in the bible you know it says so 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 i'll say yes you're right about that so train your children i remember a friend of mine she said every day she wakes up her parents will make her recite a chapter of the of the scripture, they will make a, of the Bible. We might not be doing that, you know, right now. You might not be doing that. You might not be a parent that is doing that. But always learn to train your children in the Word, because this Word is what will form them. This Word is what will shape in them. This Word is what will build them. So that even when they are not with you. They will always refer to the Bible. They'll always refer to the word that they've heard, learned. And they'll be like, oh, no, I can't do this. Or no, I can't do that. So it is important. So above all, know that your children should know the word. Teach them the scriptures. Let them know. Because it says, I'm from a child. Thou hast known the only scripture. It starts from a child. It's not when a child is grown. They're not trying to train that child. Train that child now. So that when they grow up, they will make wise decisions. So that when they grow up, they will make, you know, they will walk in the right paths. And so that they will not be influenced. Because we have to understand that in this world that we live in, if you don't train them, then the world will train them. And we know what that, we know what the consequences of the world training your children be. So you want to be the one responsible for building these children. You want to know that, you know, you are the one responsible for making these children leaders. Because whatever you do now, whatever you instill in these children will make or mar them. It will, be, it, will, it will form who they will become in the future. It will form who we will deal with in the, in the future. So remember that the responsibility rests in lies with you. We have all been called. This could just be where you start your calling from. So make sure that as you have, you have been called to train, remember that these children are, they are, they are God's, God's, um, God's own. So as you have been called and you have been given this responsibility to train these children, know that God is counting on you. Know that God is, you know, is, is holding you responsible and accountable for these children because these children are going to be the leaders of our, of, of our future. 
So whatever you do now, whatever you, you, know, you instill in them now, will make who they will become in future, in the future. So I just want to say thank you so much for being a part of this, you know, of this time out with me. I'll also come, I'll come, away, I'll be coming again, your way again very soon with another interesting topic. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you. Bye-bye.